Okay, so this video here is on the right cone with an inclined end of 24 and a half degrees. It's 500 long, 400 millimeters OD on the bottom and 100 millimeters OD on the top. It's made out of five millimeter galvanized plate. They don't make galvanized uh, plate at five millimeters the maximum thickness is three mil so what you'll do is you'll make it in uh, mild steel and then have it uh, galvanized after it's been fabricated so that's the overall size of it on the next sheet i've stated up the top here that i'm going to do it a scale of one to 2.5 so i'm going to draw it so that it actually fits on the a3 sheet of paper again which is what you'll develop it out on so what I need to do is, I've already started to put the centre line in on a start point. So if I take my 400 millimetres, I need to work to the mean line. So it's 400 minus 5 millimetres material. That gives me 395 millimetres diameter to the mean line. And if I divide that by 2.5, I get a diameter of 158 millimetres. So I need to start off with a line that's 158 millimetres long. 158 vertical height on it is 500 and it stays at 500 so if I divide 500 by 2.5 it tells me that it's 200 long so I need to offset it 200 high and then the 100 millimeters OD if I minus the 5 off that I get 95 and if I divide 95 by 2.5 I get a diameter of 38 millimeters at the top so I need to offset either side of the centre line, 19 millimetres. And draw the actual outline of the cone in, going from here to this point, and from this point here back down to this point here. So I will trim that out, trim that off on either side. Get rid of this little pointer here, which was just the start line for me. Get rid of those. Now we need to project the cone through to the top. So on this it's an extension, so I just highlight the centre line and project it through. And I needed to be 24 and a half degrees. So 100 millimetres here. And 360 degrees minus 24.5 gives me an angle of 30, uh, 335.5. So I've already marked that on there. So there's my angle. And just to check it for myself, dim angle. I can put this on here. I get 25. Highlight it, change the precision. There it goes, it's 24 and a half degrees. So I can get rid of that, get rid of my line. I'm gonna break the line up the outside. Highlight that, hit F, click on that twice. Same on this one. So those two there are just projection lines through to the top. So we'll put those on projection lines. Minimise that again. So there's the outline, the profile. The white lines are the profile of the cone. On the bottom, I need to draw a semicircle. This is uh, represents the plan view. Trim it off at the line so I have a semicircle. Uh, project the centre line down, and then we need to break our semicircle into six equal spacings. me doing it with circles you just doing it with a set of dividers or a compass so a small circle for me of five mil and then i go and trim all that out and then i get rid of my small circles And from those points, I draw my lines vertically from that point to the baseline. And 
and from there I draw them all the way through to the apex same on the other side just going to break all these lines and all those lines are going to be projection lines that's all they are at this stage to the top and to start to mark out the pattern we need to draw the lines horizontally across so this this line down this edge here is already true length this line needs to go across horizontally to the edge I'll just take it a wee bit further I find it easy to draw that center line and just trim those ones off those lines that I've put in are just projection lines again so putting those on to projection lines so from this point here I'm going to go and number the points around the base of the cone so that's the first thing I'll do from there so I've stuck the points around the base I'm going to place my joint line down the center of the center line so from that position there that's going to be my joint line my joint line is going to be on number three so what I need to do I've come in on the edge of the sheet a couple of distances just so that I know where I am to get it on the sheet you can set this up with a compass so I've come in 125 from the right hand side of the sheet and I have come down from memory about 12 12 millimeters so that's given me a start point to start to draw my pattern and what I need to do is I need to measure from the very apex right down to point number six. You can see on the screen that's 274.93 millimeters. So I need to draw a circle 274.93 millimeters. So that's the size of the circle that the cone would roll out inside. And I'm just going to trim it off to the size of the A3 for a start and what I'll do is I'll just project this line across sorry I'll take a line from this point and I'll just go straight across here and that's going to be my start position for the cone so what I've done down here is I've worked out the cord length what you need to do is take one of these increments around the base here so we'll measure the distance we've got 40.89 millimeters there what you will do is you'll set your dividers or your compass to 40.89 millimeters and you'll start at the top point and you'll scribe around this line you'll create one point and then you'll step to that to the next one to the next one what I'm going to do is to just show you here what you can do with a cord length when you step off those points around the outside they don't always give you a true dimension because you can be fractionally out with your compass or dividers so when you do a cord length calculation you get a far more accurate figure so the formula for a um, cord length is the diameter of the circle that's the large circle that I created is the large radius 274.93 times 2 so that diameter of that circle should be 549.86 so if I click on that and I type in my properties it's giving me the radius of 274.93 and is it giving me a diameter on the screen okay it's not but it's telling me that the radius is there and what I need to do next is work out the base dimension so the base dimension is half of this distance across here it was 158 so 158 divided by 2 is 79 millimeters and what we do to get the arc angle that we're looking for we divide the base radius by the large radius so the base radius is 79 the large radius is the 274.93 so we divide 79 by 274.93 and then we times it by 360 degrees because there's 360 degrees in a circle and that'll give you the arc angle in degrees the arc angle for this particular pattern is 103.44451 that's what I'm going to calculate it to you would just work to 103.5 degrees if you were going to draw it with a protractor or something so therefore the cord length is the diameter of the circle 549.86 times sine open bracket put in the angle that we the arc angle and we divide it by two close the bracket equals and it gives us a length of 431.6494831 so what I would do is I would come over here 
and I would set my, for me, I'm going to draw a circle. You could do this with a trammel bar, and what I need to type in is the 431.6494831, and it gives me this intersection point where this curve is coming around, and my the line that I've just, the circle that I've just drawn, I take a line from that point back to the top there, and that is my cone length. So I'm going to trim that off on that end point there, that one there. So if I do a dim angle, I should get 100 and, what they say, 103. And if I get the precision right, we'll come down to there. So I said 103.445131. So my chord length is the distance from, where's my line? from the corner to the corner, that distance there, uh, we calculated that, and over here it tells me that the length of it is 431.65, I draw it at 431.6494831, so that's how you would get the exact true length if you calculated it out. You divide the base radius, the base radius is 79, by the length from the apex to the bottom, then you times it by 360 degrees and that gives you the angle that you're looking for. So you put the diameter of the circle, times sine, times the angle, divided by two, close bracket, and it gives you the length across there. Now if you step your increments around there 12 times, they may not hit dead on this point here, because they can be slightly out if you haven't set your compass up correctly. So mathematically, you will always get a far better pattern than if you step it out. If you find that it doesn't hit 12 times, if it's only out by one or two moles, you probably don't need to worry. But if it's out by, say, six millimetres, well, six divided by 12 is 0.5 a mil for each increment. You could adjust your dividers and step around there exactly 12 times again and get it right. So I'm not stepping around there with this time with the circles like I've shown in previous videos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that length. I can do this... Uh, with AutoCAD, so I take this length here, and it's asking me how many times I want to divide it, and I'm going to tell it 12 points. So if I get rid of my line, I've got these spots on the screen. They are called nodes in uh, AutoCAD, and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to draw my lines, and I have to tell it to pick up a node. So I go back to where my pivot point came from, and I bring it back down to the node again. And then I do the next one. Node. So I'm just going to get rid of my two lines at the top, which I used to for a start position. I should have 13 lines here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I'm going to put my curve back in around the outside. And trim it off. To where it's supposed to go to trim that line there and that line there get rid of that so that's given me the basics i'm now going to number the points around there because my seam is on the side uh, this end here will be a three and this will be a three because that's line number three and line number three will also be in the middle here so i'm just going to put my points in so i've gone around the outside i put my points in now what i need to do is i need to put these uh, links uh, down this outside here, so I'm going to number those as well. So what I've done is I've numbered my points. The outside line was on 6 down the back edge, so that means when it projects horizontally across here, it's the top points, so number 6. Next one under that is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and this leg, because it's on this side of the cone, it's on line 0, that's where that position is there for 0. So what I want to do is I want to put transfer these lines across onto my pattern. You will do it with a compass. So I'm just going to take the distance of them from the top, the apex, down to number 6. We have 66.12. So over here I will draw in a circle at 66.12, 66.12. And I'm going to draw all my circles in and then I'm going to trim them out. So the point uh, up to the top from 5 to the apex is 67.2. Uh, so 
67.2 so circle really close to the previous one as you can see the one for uh, point number four is 70.35 so I'm just going to continue with this So I've drawn all my arcs in there. All of these lines on the inside here are all projection lines. Minimize that. So uh, the very top point, or well, the shortest one up the top is number six down to zero. So if we look at the lines, this one will be six, this will be five, four, three, two, one, and zero. So we want to be starting on three. This outside line here is number three. Then we go to four. So what I need to do is put in, you're going to sketch through here with a pencil. So I'm starting on three in the middle there. I then go up to line four, then up to line five, up to six. Then I come back down to five, four, three, two, one zero and then start heading back up to three again i get back onto the screen mark i can't let go of the spline otherwise it'll click out so there's one there's two and coming back across to three so that's my joint line on the top um, the outside edge up the very top there will break that line double click on that so those two there will go on to projection lines. So the white outline is the pattern for the cone. So that's how you draw it. I've given you a bit of an explanation on this one on how to do a chord length. I always calculate cones with chord lengths. And then what I do is I go back in and I make sure once I've got my true distance across from corner from this corner here to this corner here, I then break my line up into my 12 equal spaces off the distances off the base here. They can be slightly out and you need to make sure that when you step your 12 increments around there, they hit dead on the end. If they're slightly over, slightly under, you can adjust your dividers and do it again until they fit. But that's how you develop the pattern for the right cone with a 24 and a half degrees incline top at a scale of 1 to 2.5.